Hey everybody, thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Chris. In this episode, I'm gonna give you a glimpse inside on making holiday gifts out of resin this year. Yep, I think resin is one of the most perfect mediums to make gifts for people. And I'm gonna show you how to make an assortment of coasters and also something like this. This is a really cool serving board using Total Boat Resin. I wanna thank them for sponsoring this build. Let's get right into this. Thanks for joining me. So thank you guys for joining me for this project. This is gonna be a pretty fun one. And again, I'm gonna recommend that you definitely hand make gifts this year. And this year, yes, I'm making coasters with resin and of course some walnut and some maple as well. Here is some leftover walnut I've had from a previous project. I'm taking it on the table saw, cutting it into three inch strips, and then I'm gonna resaw it partially on each side and then finish the resawing process here on the bandsaw. Now that the pieces are fairly thin, I'm gonna take them to the thickness planer and run them through a few passes to get them very even and nice and uniform. So it's at this point that I want to actually break the wood pretty aggressively, that way I get a nice tear in the wood and hooking it up to this bench, well, I should have known better. These clamps aren't meant to take sledgehammer material and that's okay, but I figured if I put it in between two larger pieces of old butcher block, smash it this way, it turns out that it works out pretty well. As you can see here, nice chunks, very random, kind of a chaotic pattern. That's what I'm looking for. Again, here's some pieces of maple that I did the same exact way. Nice little smash technique, <laughs> pretty fun stuff. And here are the spoils. Check out all these jagged edges. This is exactly what I was going for. Now it's time to take these pieces to the crosscut sled, cut them down to the smaller sizes that I need. Uh, anybody want a baked potato? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Either way, this is a necessary process because I'm going to make some molds and the molds just aren't that big. Speaking of which, I'm gonna mill down some, mill down, I'm gonna rip down some pieces of Baltic birch and I'm gonna line these pieces with this house wrap tape. I find in my experience using epoxy, making molds, house wrap tape by far is the least sticky, is the most elusive, what's the word here? Anyway, uh, epoxy resin doesn't really stick to it very well and it does come out fairly easy considering other options. PVC, I've tried sheets of PVC. I wasn't a big fan of that. Uh, this typically is the way I do it and it's tried and true. So if you're gonna start getting into epoxy and pouring molds, I definitely recommend using house wrap tape on plywood. It works very, very well. And before I go any further, just a little insurance, gonna put some house wrap tape on the back of each of these molds. That way there is not a single chance of any leakage whatsoever. And here are the pieces of jagged wood cut to a more manageable size. And to go ahead and put them down into these molds, I'm using Starbond's thick CA glue with their activator. And I can't recommend this stuff any more than I already do. It's a great product. If you wanna check it out, get some for yourself. I think every maker space, every woodworker needs some of this CA glue around just for the versatility of it. Check the link down below. Go to starbond.com, type in code GLIMPSE10. Save you 10% on your first order or any sequential order after that. Thanks guys, check them out. Now, onto the epoxy. We're gonna use Total Boat's penetrating epoxy resin at first. And here's why I do that. Penetrating epoxy has really awesome properties in terms of getting into the nooks and crannies, into the wood, into those pores. That way when you pour your total boats two to one ratio in there. You don't get a bunch of air bubbles trying to seek their way out. Penetrating epoxy is taking care of all that for you. At this point, I am pouring a batch of the total boats two to one ratio, high performance epoxy, and I'm going about a quarter to three eighths of an inch thick. You don't wanna go too thick here. Uh, the thinner you pour, the fewer air bubbles you're gonna have. At this point, I've got another small batch of the epoxy, and I'm gonna put in some black diamond pigments. Now, I'm gonna introduce this pigment through a syringe into the epoxy that hasn't set up yet. The reason I didn't pour the entire thing blue is that I worked pretty hard to get these jagged edges and I want that visual interest. And I wanna be able to see the jagged edges of the wood through all the resin. 
And as you can see here, once it's in there, I'm taking an ice pick and I'm gonna kinda, kinda mess with it a little bit. Give it a little bit more visual interest. Kinda drag it out here, spin it around. I'm gonna show you a shot here where you're gonna be able to see the pigment is involved, yet the clear is still there, and you can still see those edges of that wood that we worked so hard to achieve. Now I've got another batch of the high performance resin. I'm gonna save just a little bit of it for something in just a second. And I'm gonna pour it into the mold. We're gonna make sure that we go slow, not to create any more air bubbles that we need. Again, when you're mixing this stuff, you don't need to mix it like you're stirring up a cake batter. You just need to mix it so it incorporates. Go slow, mix it for a couple minutes. Don't incorporate those bubbles and you should have a really great result. So if you guessed that little bit of epoxy that we held back was for some pigment, yes, you were right. We're gonna add some of the same blue, but then we're gonna add some of the Arctic white, the pearl white that Black Diamond offers. And this is kind of an experiment for me. I've never done this before where I kept a project with clear resin, but then layered in various colors throughout the pouring process. As you can see, well, I think it looks pretty neat. Um, again, I didn't make the entire thing blue because I wanted it to be able to have the light go through. I wanted you to see those jagged edges of the wood. And again, the ice pick is coming in handy, kind of giving it some visual interest as well. And quite frankly, as much as I like and can appreciate the blue colors within the resin, I'm a simple guy and I'm kind of a purist and I really do just like this kind of clear and wood. These coasters are gonna be fantastic. I can already tell right now that I'm going to appreciate the really clear instead of the blue. However, this blue stuff has made some crazy different patterns in here and I'm really curious to see how these are gonna turn out as well. Now it's time to take these out of the molds. Now with a dead blow non-marring mallet, I'm gonna use that to take off the walls of the mold. And then I'm gonna use just a simple paint or a little paint scraper there to kind of get it off the bottom. And it turned out great. And but before we get to the final stage, you gotta do a little bit more work. We're gonna sand it down. We're gonna put it through the thickness planer. And I didn't realize that my planer had a clog in it. Uh, that's why you see so much dust there and forgive me for that. But typically you're not gonna have that much dust coming through a thickness planer that is hooked up to dust collection. Once that's done, we're gonna sand it down to about 240. Run, with, run it through some mineral spirits or incorporate some mineral spirits, kind of give me a look of what's gonna happen and then mix up a small batch of epoxy and we're just gonna flood the surface real quick and it's gonna kind of brighten it up for us a little bit. And at this point, everything's going pretty well. Now I've got a couple of measurements made and after that pour, we're gonna cut these into exact squares, giving us about three and a half, I think they're maybe three and a half inch coasters. At this point, I'm gonna chamfer the edges just slightly with a hand sanding block to kind of just give it a little bit of that nice feel to it. And you're probably thinking I'm crazy at this point, but I do really appreciate a matte finish on these. And I'm gonna go ahead and spray these with a matte Rust-Oleum's enamel. And that's gonna be it for those. Once those cure, those are gonna be beautiful. Now. It's time to make our way to the other style of coasters by using a round mold. I found this on Amazon. You can just type in silicon mold and a plethora of choices come up. And I'm just kind of giving you a couple examples here. One, there's a whole bunch of cubes of hardwoods. There's some nuts and bolts and pencils. And I got some washers. Actually, I don't have any bolts. But my favorite is the one in the bottom right. Look at those pocket screws. I've arranged those in there and I think that's gonna be just fantastic. I can't wait to see how those turn out. And again, I've got a batch of epoxy that I'm gonna go ahead and pour onto the surface of these. You're gonna do this in a multi-pour process. Might take you know an afternoon or maybe a, a couple of days to do. Uh, I've got some black diamond pigments again mixed in, the blue and the copper. They're gonna go into these pieces with all the different pieces of wood at first. And you're gonna see, you don't wanna flood the surface too much because the pieces that are lighter and less dense are gonna float. So we wanna do this in stages. All right, here's the idea. Once everything is poured and ready to go and it's set for a couple hours, we're gonna mix another batch and just lather, rinse, repeat, making these pours as we go. Everything seems to be going through pretty well. I'm really kind of, in, I mean, I'm just curious to see how these mosaic style coasters are gonna turn out. Uh, I'm not too keen on the pencil one at this point. I didn't cut enough pieces, so I'm not really too big on that one, but 
<clears throat> if you want to do a colored pencil one, again, cut yourself up some more pencils. Don't do what I did and make it kind of look kind of hodgepodgey like that. But here we go. This is the last pour. We're going to incorporate these. And now, once they've cured overnight, everything comes right out of the molds, as you see here. And yes, I was right. This is definitely my favorite. These pocket screws never look so pretty. I can almost guarantee you that. This one turned out fantastic. I think this is going to be my personal coaster on my desk. Okay, I've got some quarter inch plywood here and I'm cutting down into about five inch squares. Reason being, I'm gonna take these two mosaic coasters and we're gonna turn them into four. How I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna cut a hole or a circle a little bit bigger than the actual coasters themselves. And then take those circle cutouts and glue them to a backer board, giving me a channel or a nesting hub to hold these circular pieces of resin really making it safer to cut and resaw these in half. And now we're gonna attach them with the glue, CA glue and blue tape trick. They're gonna be stuck on here and now it's time to give it a final sanding to the thickness that we want. We're gonna sand one area flush, flip it over. It's gonna go back into these little kind of circle molds. And then I'm going to sand the other side and it's gonna give me the final thickness that we need on these kind of interesting mosaic coasters. First and foremost though, I wanna say it creates a lot of dust on these. So get yourself a sandpaper eraser and go through this process. It'll really save you some headaches and you won't replace your sandpaper nearly as much. I'm going to finish these in a two part process. I'm gonna use an oil wax finish to really bring out the colors and then a simple boiled linseed oil slash polyurethane mixture that I use quite a bit around the shop. It's basically one part of each boiled linseed oil polyurethane and mineral spirits creates a really nice wipe on poly blend and I really like how these turned out as well. I simply just dry the surfaces with a paper towel and let them cure overnight and you're good to go. So I've mounted my palm router in some squeeze clamps here, some screw clamps, and I'm using this as a small router table. This is an eighth inch round over bit and all the experimentation coasters, as I'm calling them, get a slight round over. Now I've got another batch of resin. I'm gonna coat the edges of the resin and then I'm going to pour on a nice thick coat, letting it drip around the sides and the clarity just comes right back. These are turning out pretty nice, I must say. Now, real quickly, I'll show you how to make a serving board. You've made a mold, and what I've done, I've used PVC for this mold. I don't like this material. Definitely go with the house wrap and the plywood. I mix two batches of resin up, one's flavored in copper, one's flavored in a white Arctic pearl. Of course, they're not flavors, they're just colors. Once those are set, I go ahead and demold this thing. These are two pieces of walnut that bisect all this resin, and what a cool effect this gave. I really do like how this turned out. I'm simply gonna put a chamfer over every single edge here. And again, look at that grain and that design. You never know sometimes what you're gonna get with resin. This thing turned out beautiful, I must say. Well, here is the final showcase. And I hope this has kind of got you motivated and inspired to go out and make something, make anything for the loved ones that you have in your life this holiday season. If it's with resin, fantastic. Again, go down below in the description, use the coupon code to get started on totalboat.com. Check all that stuff down below. But I do want to encourage you, go, go out there and make something for your family this year. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Check that out. Even get some tape measure ribbon make a gift for someone. I think handmade gifts are so much more thoughtful than your store-bought variety. And again, I'm sorry it was a lengthy video, but I just wanted to show you that there's some various techniques out there you can use. And really the sky's the limit with different pigments and all kinds of different woods you can use. Really, your imagination really is the only thing that's holding you back in making gifts for people like this. Guys, thank you so much for joining me. I wanna thank Total Boat again for sponsoring this video, and I wanna thank you, the viewer, for being here. Your viewership means the world to me, and I thank you very much for it. My name is Chris. This has been A Glimpse Inside. I appreciate you being here. I'm always gonna invite you to subscribe. If you're not, that way you never miss a video. Guys, thanks again. I'll see you on the next project, and until then, get out there and make something, will you?